Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about how you can create an event using a J button in Java. So far we have learned how to create most of the Java GUI components like the frame, labels and buttons. So I guess the next step for us is to learn how a button should behave whenever a user clicks on it. Because based on the code, we have written so far in the previous videos, uh, nothing happens when you click on any of the buttons. We had a video where I showed you how to create a button, but we didn't talk about how to create an event or like how to make things happen when the user clicks on the buttons. All right, so in more technical terms, when you click on a button, it has to create an event which is also called an action event. This action event sends a message to another object commonly called the action listener. And as soon as the action listener gets the message, it performs an action. So in order to handle an event in Java, you first need to specify the corresponding listener object. So let me come back to my code here and so that we can know what we are talking about. As you can see, my project is structured this way. I have the main class that I called test app and inside that main class, I have my main method. And this method would allow me to create my frame object. I have a second class here, which is called my frame and it is inheriting from the JFrame class. So it will inherit the methods and the properties of the JFrame class. And so every object of type my frame would be a frame because it is inheriting from JFrame. And since we want that the buttons that we would add to this particular frame to actually listen to events and we have to, as I said, implement the action listener interface. Because as I said, in order for a button to handle an event in Java, we have to specify the corresponding listener object. And secondly, we have to define the methods to be called when the event is sent to the listener. This can be possible by us implementing the action listener first, like this. I have to import the class for the action listener. And here, as you can see, we have to add some unimplemented methods. So the action performed method. So this particular method is going to define the action that would happen whenever we click on a particular button. Okay, so that's it. So what we can note is that in Java, there are various classes that can handle different kinds of events. So the action event is handled by a special predefined uh, class called the action listener. This predefined class contains a single method called action performed. This method action performed will be the one that will contain the code that you want the system to execute when an event is generated. Also note that the class action listener here only contains the method so also note that the class action listener here is an interface. So Java language does not allow you to create or instantiate an object of type action listener because it's an interface. Now the question is to know how do you create an object that will play the role of an action listener to a button object? So one way to do that is to create a class, what we have done here, which is my frame, and then implement the properties of the class action listener and handle the event generating by clicking the button. And also the class must contain the action performed method, because if you don't have the action performed method, you're gonna have an error. And that's why we are having the action performed method here. All right, so enough with the talking. Let's take an example that would allow us to understand this event handling. So let's say that, let's suppose we have a frame that is containing a button. So what we have to do is to create a button. So we say J button btn equal new J button. And we will set the text of this button to button one. Let's import the J button class. 
we can add this particular button to the frame. So we will say this, that add to the frame, the button. So we add the button like this, all right? So if we want to run this, now we will show because we have to create the frame here. So we say my frame equal to new my frame and save. Now, when I run, you can see the button shown, but the button is occupying the whole space of the frame. I have to fix that. Let me come back to the my frame class. And here I am going to set the bounds of this button. So I will say btn set bounds 200, 200. And then the size, I will say 100 for the width and 50 for the height. Again, also add a set flexible to false like this. And let me run. Okay, it has not taken any effect. We have to set the layout of our part frame to null. So we say this, that set layout to null so that this set bounds would take effect. Now you can see the button. So let's say 400 for the X axis. All right. So in the main class, we actually created the object of this frame. All right. As you could see, we said my frame, frame, assignment operator, new, my frame. This line of code would allow us to create the object of the frame. So if you want to handle events, whenever the button is clicked, we need to implement the interface action listener over the my frame class, which we did already. Okay, we have implements action listener here. After we have done that, we have to add the method called action performed, which we are having down here. So this will mean that our particular frame will now listen to events, okay? So let's say, for example, we want our program to output a message whenever the user clicks on the button. What can we do? So we have to write that code inside the action performed method. So as the name suggests, this code would actually describe the action that has to be performed whenever we click on a particular button. So we will say if, uh, we would change the argument here. We, we can say evt for event. So if event that get source, so we're gonna get the source of the event is equal to btn. So this is to tell us that if the source of the event is the button, because btn is the name we gave to our button, then we want to output system that out that print line you clicked the button and then semicolon now you can see we are having an error why this is because the button was not declared globally copy this and declare it outside of my constructor like this and down here i don't need the j button here so i will leave it like this so now we don't have any button at all so the reason why we have to de declare it globally here is because we, we want to be able to access this variable in our action performed method. Because if it is only defined or declared in the constructor, it cannot be accessed outside of the constructor. If we run this, the button wouldn't still work. Okay, let me just show you. If I click, I won't get any output in the console, all right? because we have not added the action listener to the button. So the button at this current moment, the button is not able to listen to any action or to any event. So in order to make sure that our button is listening to the event, we need to add the action listener. So we will simply say btn that add action listener. And then we will say this, this here is making reference to the class that is implementing the action listener. So the class implementing the action listener in our program is the MyFrame class. And the button is finding itself in that particular class. So that's why we are saying this here, to say that this particular class where you are finding yourself. So after you've done that, you've added the action listener. Now when you run and then click on the button, you can see that you are getting the message showing in a console, you click the button, just as we defined it in our action performed method here. This is the event, okay, the argument, the event. 
So the method we are passing the event. So we're saying that if you get the source of the event to be equal to the button, then output this message. So that's basically what this means. So now, as you can see, you can click on the button as many times as you want. We can also say that, okay, we just want to make sure that the button is clickable only once. And uh, after the user has clicked on the button once, we want the button to be inactive. So what we can do is we will add a line of code in our action performed method saying btn that set enabled to false and then click on run. Now when we click, you can see the output in the console that the button is inactive. We can also say that, okay, uh, if you do that, we want to, when you, the user clicks, we want to, let's say, for example, change the color of the button. Say btn set background color, import the color class. When you run, click. Now when you click, you can see that the color of the button has become blue. You can also say that uh, we want the text to be calm white. So we say foreground color that white. Now when you click on the button, now you can see that the button has a background color of blue and then its text is white. So now what if we want to display a label on our frame once the button is clicked? What we will do is to declare a label globally like we did here. So we will say J label, label like this. Let's import the J label class. So we've declared it globally because we want it to be accessible globally everywhere in our class. And in the frame, we are going to set the attributes of the label. So we will say label equal new label. This is to instantiate the label like this. And then label that set text. We will say some text, all right. Let me close the double quote. We can set the bounds. So you say 400, 200 for Y axis, and then 200, 200 for the width and the height. Here we will say set uh, visible to false. We don't want to show the label yet. We only want to show the label whenever the user clicks on the button. So after you have done that, we can add this label to the frame with this that add label and then semicolon when you run the program the label won't show because we set its visibility to false all right this won't show okay so now we want to say that okay we want the label the label to show whenever the user clicks on a button how should we do that so we simply say label that set visible to true so that means that when the user clicks on a button then the label will show. As you can see, the label is showing here. I will just work on the positioning of the label. Let me say 100 like this. Let me say five here. Let me run 150 for Y axis, 170. Let me run. All right. So let's say label that set text, you clicked the button. When you run, now, when you click, it says you click the button because we set it in our action performed method here. So whenever the user clicks on the button, it will set the label to visible and then it will make sure the text of the label be you clicked the button. All right. So let me run again. You will see that you click the button. So that's it on how you can handle events um how you can uh, make your button listen to events and how you can uh write the code for the action performed and in this our example we we have seen how you can click on the button and then output a particular message or do a certain action on your program so i hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like share and comment and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.